everyone and welcome to another episode of Artist Conversations. Um, each week we get up close and personal with an artist and we learn all about their stories and all about their craft. And um, this week we're so excited to have this all the way from the Netherlands, Nikkei Overbeek. Hello Nikkei! Hi, hello! Um, so Nikkei is a writer and dramaturg whose written works have been staged at various theatres around the Netherlands, including at the Amsterdam Fringe Festival. And she also lectures in creative writing and has published a book on perspective in writing. Um, so hi Nikkei, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, please can you tell us a bit more about yourself? Um, I'm Nikkei Overbeek. Uh, I live in The Hague, in the Netherlands, um, and um, I'm a writer and I'm a dramaturg and I've studied um, writing for performance and theatre studies and I did my master's comparative cultural analysis at the UvA, University of Amsterdam. Um, and I currently live and work in The Hague, I think that's sums it up. <laughs> and tell us a bit more about the work that you do as writer and dramaturg. Yeah, so I, um, in preparation of this conversation, I looked at some of the projects that I'm working on now because I think it's most interesting to speak about what I've been working on these days. Um, so the first one I wanted to tell you about is a project called Limbs Recalling Limbs. This is a text that I've been working on for quite some time. It started as a project where um, I worked with Steti English Theatre. They are based here in The Hague and they are they program uh, uh, British theatre and they also provide artists with opportunities to create their own work within the context of their company. And I was lucky enough to be able to write. Um, so I wrote in English for them. Um, and it started off as a project where I was interested in um, some Shakespeare characters and very specifically looking at what would happen if I would imagine to write from their physical experiences. So sort of an embodied approach to their, um, to their characters. And that text uh, was read uh, in the theatre in The Hague. We had a reading there. I have some picture of that if, if you want, I can show yes. you. This is, of course, just a reading. What's always interesting is that if you write a text, the first thing that happens is that there's just actors on a stage who will try to read the text for you and see what it sounds like. And this time they did that under the um, direction of Tina Packer. I have a picture of her as well reading. She's the founder of Shakespeare Company and she helped me direct uh, the reading of this text and it was very interesting to work with her because she comes from a very almost traditional um, Shakespearean theatre interpre interpretation so everything that she um, she worked with my text and everything that she uh, decided for it was very big and dramatic so she wanted the actors to really speak out like I don't know like they were almost on the Shakespearean stage and really delivering and the interesting thing is is that it's completely opposite to how I would approach the um, how I would approach my own writing but it was very interesting to see her interpretation because sometimes if someone works with you in a very extreme type of format it gives you sort of the range of what's possible it shows you the contrasts of what you can and cannot do with the text so that's very that was an interesting reading and from that um, first sharing um, I started to work further on the text I developed it and um, looked for someone else who wanted to direct it and at the moment I'm working with Anne-Marie de Bruin who is also familiar with Stet and she's going to help me direct it. But in the meantime, um, first we decided that it would be interesting to use that text as a, not as a theater piece, but as an audio piece. Mm -hmm. So to create an audio drama out of it. And then next, next thing that happened was that we were in the middle of Corona. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we had a space in mind and we were working on sort of an installation with a designer who was creating a, a piece where the audience would be attached to, uh, 
to a wooden uh, installation and they would have sort of headphones and they would and there was things with contact speakers and this whole plan <laughs> we had to abandon it because uh, well at first because we were at home and we couldn't meet anywhere and now of course because of all the corona rules we can't do that safely so we decided to to transfer it to an audio piece so i'm currently working on that with um Air van Abdi, who is a, a sound designer, and I can uh, I can show you a picture of him because he's been in the period where we were still able to work with this piece as a, as an installation. You see. He has a studio in which he was testing all, he's testing all kinds of uh, things we can do with the sound. So when we record the text, we don't just record the voice, which of course also needs directing, but we also record sounds that are sort of the surroundings of this piece. And he's working with all kinds of techniques and little, very creative ways to alter the sound or to adapt it. So here what you see on the picture is that he is testing a bowl that was supposed to become a speaker. So if you use a contact speaker, what happens is that if you touch a surface, you will hear the sound. But you only hear it because you are touching something. And the sound is sort of directed to you through the uh, vibra vibrating of the material that you're touching. Writing for a piece for stage where you'd be able to see actors acting. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's a slightly different technique because, well, especially if you have a more classical piece where there is characters on the stage. Of course, you have text that is usually coming from an action or a situation because people are in dialogue because something is happening. Uh, and with the sound, I really like to play with language and the sound of language and to create atmosphere with language. So for me, what is exciting about this sound um, work is that I can sometimes abandon the idea of a character or a storyline and I can, I can almost work towards a more poetic interpretation of language while still trying to to, to create for an audience a sort of a journey or a red thread that they can follow throughout the... And, you know, I think a lot of us are much more familiar with, you know, reading novels or reading literary texts, but not, not so familiar with the writing techniques for stage. I wondered if you could tell us a bit more about that. Well, uh, I think apart from the fact that lots of it is also very similar, but I think, what, as I just mentioned, the most... Um, significant difference for me would be that when you work with people on a stage the language almost you almost need as little language as possible is my experience because so much can be communicated through what people do or how they look or the way they say a certain word or a sentence so you don't want to put too many words in their mouth because can sometimes even take away from the actors to be free to to do their work. I, I, I realize that I'm also referring to a practice that is maybe slightly different from the British theater because it's much more text-based than the Dutch usually is. But if you're writing for a stage in general, you have to make sure that every word that you write down for an actor to say sort of works for them works for them and for the scene and for the situation and you want it to be usually you want it to be active language so that means that your words should come from us from an action so you rather want to write something similar to get me the bread will you then a com then a complete analysis of uh, the current political situation in relation to, you know, you want your characters to be able to move with the action. So that's probably the biggest difference. Whereas in prose, you have much more space to contemplate or to create an analysis of something or to 
listen to the thoughts of a character. Right. And speaking of which, um, do, do you have any favorite themes you like to explore in your works? Yeah, I think most of my work has to do something with voices that aren't um, heard very well. Um, and do you have any particular like marginalized or you mentioned you, you want to kind of express the voices of people that usually don't get heard. Are, are there any particular peoples that you've, you've written about? I work a lot with people who come here as either refugees or usually they just come here because they want to either work or be more safe than they were or have better i don't know i find it really hard to call people a refugee or to call them their people they came to the netherlands and many of them struggle to create a good situation for themselves here so i've tried in my work with them to sometimes help them express their stories so in that case it's not about me or my writing but it's more about giving them the tools to speak or giving them the ideas or uh, just asking them a lot of questions and see where i can help them um, and there's another team that always is in my work but which i've been recently more prone to work on and to explore further which is the the female voice or the way in which women's stories are told. Yeah, that's fantastic. I think it, it's a meaningful thing. It, it sounds like a very meaningful thing you're doing. It's not just, you know, you're not just telling your own stories, but you're also helping to empower people almost by giving them a voice or helping them to express the narratives. And um, I wondered how, what was the journey like for you? How did you first get, get involved or get interested in this? Um, I, I, I was lucky enough to be in a primary school where there was lots of different nationalities, lots of different backgrounds, different cultures, different people in my class. And I would sometimes notice that the same behavior that I um, did, for instance, not making my homework or doing something that wasn't allowed, would not make me get into trouble, but would get others into trouble. So I started to realize, okay, so apparently there's something different, although there's, I don't think there should be something different happening. So that those kinds of um, moments were, that that helped me think about the voicing. <laughs> yeah, that's very inspiring actually, you know, like recognizing some of these invisible privileges and, and really make, making, making the most of it to, to make things right. Um, and can you share with us a bit about the creative process behind behind your works? I think it's nice to um, say a little bit about a text that I wrote um, that is related to this this female voice team. I uh, at some point got the almost assignment from a local company to write a text for Joan of Arc. Um, what I did for that was read a lot of texts that have been written about her, research done about her, but also pieces of theatre that have already been made about her. Um, and then I started to... Well, I found a transcript of the process that she went through. So she was never able to write, but someone wrote down what she said. So that's, I think, the closest we get to her own voice. And I was very inspired by it because I realized that she was, if that was actually how she spoke, she was very, she was very stubborn and very, she wasn't to be uh, uh, messed with. She, she said things like, I've already told you that twice. I'm not telling you again. Like, so very, uh, did you see the man on that day? No, I didn't. I already told you. Next question, you know, she was very level-headed also. So I was inspired. So I started to write, sort of inspired by that um, trial. And then very quickly realized that the, the problem with that is that a character who always is level-headed and sort of goes for their goal, um, it's, it doesn't create that much tension. And so, so at some point I had, to, uh, I had to find new ways to give her a voice. So I started to imagine what it would have been like to be 
in her cell waiting for that trial every day. But I also just, I also, I, I tend to use a lot of free writing where I just sort of um, write whatever comes to the page. Um, and then just recently I had an opportunity to have a reading with three actresses. We did an online reading with a, a theater company called TG Echo. They are based in Arnhem in the Netherlands. Anna Schoen leads it and she's an actress as well and she read it um, uh, together with two others. Great, thank you so much. And um, lastly, before you, before, before you leave, I wondered if you had some words of advice for other aspiring artists or writers. Uh, something I think is important is to stay true to your own goals and to your own voice and the things you want to say, uh, even if that means that uh, you will not have a huge audience or you will not have immediate success <laughs> with your work but i think it's important and also to see if you can um if you can make a big gesture with what you're doing um what i mean by that is if you can make a radical choice or if you can create something really out outside of any boundary you've you've seen others work in because I think if art does something, it creates space. It creates a space to be different or to see others be different and to understand that there is more to do or to explore than every day. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for all your insights. Thank you.